Hello and welcome everyone to the Gold and Silver Club end of week review for the 11th of July 2014 presented by myself, Phil Carr and Nick Kowski at the Gold and Silver Club. Today we will be reviewing the latest developments in the commodities markets. We'll be analysing the week's performance. This live session will cover a end of week summary for the commodities markets. We'll be looking at the top trades of the week. We'll be covering, covering live market technical analysis and also we'll look at the week ahead. So six key news announcements which will be affecting the commodities markets this week. And of course, we'll be answering any questions you may have too. The big news this week is the commodities complex have surged, gold in particular and silver Gold surged to a four-month high on safe haven for buying. Gold price surged to its highest level in more than four months as the Middle East tension and Portuguese banking fears sparked safe haven demand. These events were combined with the re release of the FOMC the minutes on Wednesday, which sent the US dollar tumbling to a one-week low. The focal point for the financial markets this week was the release of the FOMC the minutes, which released the uh, which revealed the Fed would end its quantitative easing program in October with a final cut of 15 billion. However, the document failed to provide a timetable for their highly anticipated interest rate hike. So whilst highlighting concerns by some FOMC policymakers relating to a feeling of complacency over the central bank's economic outlook, this sense of uncertainty triggered a sharp sell-off in the US dollar driving capital into the safety of gold. We'll be taking a look at that on the charts very shortly. Elsewhere in the Middle East uh, was back in the spotlight again as Israel launched a military offensive on the Gaza Strip. On Thursday, Israel mobilized 20,000 soldiers for a possible ground invasion of the Gaza Strip as opposing militants were reported to have fired over 105 rockets at Israel cities earlier in the week. On top of events in the Middle East, concerns about the financial health of Portugal's top bank fueled safe haven demand for gold as the week comes to a close. So among other precious metals, platinum and palladium are both headed for their fourth straight week of gains, while silver is set for a sixth weekly rise. So we'll take a look at that very shortly on the technicals. Before we do so, I'm Phil Carr, professional trader, trainer, and speaker. I'm the co-founder and director of the Gold and Silver Club. I specialize in teaching people how to make money from trading the most lucrative financial markets in the world, so gold, silver, oil, natural gas, agricultural commodities. I've trained thousands of individuals to become independent traders and successfully manage their own investment portfolio, and I'm responsible for the research and development of the Gold and Silver Club trademark strategies that have a proven track record of generating returns for traders. Also, a regular contributor to a number of financial publications. I speak at numerous trading seminars, webinars, and workshops. Joining me in running the Gold and Silver Club is Nick Kowski, professional trader, investment analyst, and speaker. Nick began his career within private wealth management in 2002, before making the transition into proprietary trading. Prior to co-founding the Gold and Silver Club, spent over five years coaching professional fund managers and traders internationally for some of the world's top tier hedge funds and investment banks. And through his first hand relationship with some of the world's most successful traders, discovered the formula, mindset and tools that can give any individual the definitive edge to trade in any economy. Also regularly writes for a number of global business and $1,337 an ounce. So we'll take a look at the technicals very shortly. The top trades of the week using the Gold and Silver Club signature trading strategies are as follow. So first of all, we have corn. Uh, corn earlier on this week, we broke through a major level of support. We had a, a lovely sell opportunity on the break of that support zone. 270-point uh, profit on that. The risk was 60 points, so $600 risk for $2,700 Profit for each lot traded for a lovely four to one risk to reward. We had natural gas, a sell or earlier on the week as well. We broke through a major support level, which we discussed last week. Uh, again, the risk on this was 75.750 US dollars for each lot traded for a profit of 210 points to $2,100 for each lot for a 2.5 to one. And we also had that lovely breakout on gold yesterday, which we had been anticipating for most of the week here. We've got a 200 point breakout uh, from an earlier entry on Tuesday. And the risk on that was 100 points. So each lot traded $1,000 for a 200 point profit for a day trade uh, for a two to one there for $2,000 uh, profit. So what we'll do now, we'll take a look, we'll move over to the live technicals 
and we'll just take a look at how the markets are shaping up today. First of all, I'd like us to have a look at the US dollar index. So the US dollar index, you can actually see here where we got a bit of a pullback midweek. We do seem to be starting to form a downward trending channel here on the US dollar index. What I'd like to see in order to get more downside here is a break of the key level of support. So 79.99, circa the 80 level here. If we come down uh, again and we hold this downward trending channel, which is starting to develop here on the US dollar index, we should get more upside here for the other precious metals, particularly gold and silver. You'll note last week on the non-farm payroll, we did get a big spike to the upside, which was pressure on the gold and silver market. However, it was very short-lived. Gold and silver, they held their support, very quick retracements back up to uh, their daily highs. And we can see here the US dollar index, at the moment, it uh, seems to be consolidating. And I think if we can come, come down here and get a break below the 79.99 level, we could be due further downside around to the 79.76. Uh, certainly, I, I would keep an eye on this downward trending channel. If we can break out of this, uh, come up and pop up to the next channel just above, which would take us around the 80, uh, 80 level here, the 80, 20. If we get a break out to the upside here, we could be due some further pressure on gold and silver. But for the time being, I like uh, potential short opportunities here for the US dollar index whilst we'll, we remain this, uh, we'll remain this downward trend. If we take a look at silver, silver has done very well here at six consecutive week of gains you can see that we've still managed to hold on to all of the gains from the FOMC announcement two weeks ago and uh, we've uh, actually reached you can see here yesterday we came up and we spiked we've got a nice breakout above the 2124 level we spiked to 2157 which you can see very clearly uh, is a previous level of resistance going back to mid-March. We are forming a nice channel here we get higher highs higher lows you can see each time Silver comes down and it re you get any retracements and it retests retest the support zone, the lower end of the, the trend channel. We are getting very heavily supported. So as we go into the close, we are closing at the weekly highs here. The next key level for us to take out is the 2157 level here. Okay, that's what I'll be looking at for additional buy opportunities. So the breakout this week was from the 2130 zone. We've got a nice breakout, circa 25 point move here to the upside which is uh, is good in terms of uh, silver's average daily volatility what i'd like to see next you can see on silver if we just zoom it out and we go into the historical charts here we can see that we have managed to break out of this very strong downward trending channel we've been in this for the past three years or so from 2011 and we have finally broken out of that so what we need to do next we are starting to form a good base here we do need to take out these uh, swing highs going back to uh, mid February and mid March. If we can come up, we can start taking out the 2150 level, 2175, uh, and also the 22 level. We could start to build a good base here for silver. So silver still has got some work to do. It could still uh, just sell off here. You could see we could get a further sell off at the moment from the current. There is a resistance channel which uh, could maintain at the moment on the silver market. So we do need to do some work just to break above these pivot highs but if we can get a sustained move close back above certainly above the 22 level we should start to take out some stops from our previous sell shorts uh, those who are still in positions in the market and we could really start to build up some momentum to the upside here next key level being the 25 level for gold ultimately in the midterm here during the summer months as we normally typically see seasonality bring some buying into gold, particularly as we go into August, gold and silver. So with that, let's take a look at gold. Gold, very similar situation. We've had a consolidation zone here for two weeks. Gold has done very well to hold on to its gains from the FOMC. If we had a break below 1306 here, we may have seen a retracement back to the 1287 zone. We didn't get that. Uh, so far, we've held on to the gains from the FOMC announcement. And uh, at the moment, we are closing currently near the weekly highs we're at 1337 spikes up to 1345 yesterday there was a quite a lot of consolidation around 1335 to 1345 level so we did get a nice pop up to the upside yesterday which you would expect it was about 120 point move after a, about a couple of weeks of consolidation i'd be looking now for 1350 to be breached to the upside and get close above that psychological resistance level we've got a key level at 1355 and above that, really, in order to pick up some strong momentum to the upside, I'd like to see gold just take out this, uh, this pivot high again 
going back to mid-March, getting above the 1400s and really start to pick up some momentum to the upside. So gold still does have some work to do, but it is doing well at the moment to uh, break out from uh, the weekly highs here, from the two-week highs. And we can see this resistance channel, which would meet the price around. We can have a look here. We're probably going to meet the price around the 1375 level. And I'd like to just see gold break out of that 1400 level and pick up some momentum to the upside as we come into August. Uh, pullbacks at the moment, if we were to get a, a significant sell-off, I'd be looking around the 1306 level and 1311 level for potential buys here. If we do get a break below 1307, we'll flush a lot of stops. And I'll be looking around the 1287 level for the next key level of support. But currently, we're finishing the week strong. You can see here, we're finishing at the weekly highs. So it's looking very strong at the moment for the metals. Uh, if we take a look also at platinum and palladium, palladium still managing to stay very nicely within this upward trending channel. We did get a bit of a pullback yesterday. You can see this trend channel has been in place since March 2014. Very clear trend channel. Every pullback we get to the lower end of this trend channel uh, is treated as a buy opportunity at the moment. We are seeing very solid support there. We are finding some resistance at the upper end of this trend channel. You can see just yesterday uh, and earlier on this week as well, we hit our head against that, but we have broken out now to uh, certainly 2014 highs here. The eight, uh, 875 US dollars an ounce, and we've uh, had some significant breakouts which have led us to 14 days of gains here. We've, uh, I think it's been the longest winning streak for Palladium in the last 12 years or so uh, that we've had at the moment. We can see here all these daily highs, consecutive gains of uh, higher highs, higher lows. So we're uh, looking very good here for Palladium, very much on the bullish side. So in terms of uh, additional entry points, I'll be looking for a, uh, a break and a close above 875 at the moment to get more momentum. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit a slight pullback here for Palladium unless we can get a break above the 80, uh, 875 level and then previous resistance becomes support and we start seeing some further breakouts to the upside. Otherwise, we may start to get a bit of a pullback towards the lower, lower end of the trend channel and get another move to the upside. 875, the key level to look at on Palladium. If we look at Platinum here, uh, Platinum also had a nice breakout this week. You can actually see on Platinum where previous resistance at the 1490 level here has out actually now become support and we're getting a nice little v-shaped pattern here which we can look for a breakout as we go into next week so if we can get a nice clean break of 1518 we'll be looking to take the breakout the next psychological resistance level on platinum being 1550 that's the key level to look at so uh we're just waiting for a breakout now above the 1518 level on platinum that looks very good for a break as we go into next week if we get a, a pullback here we'll be looking for a pullback down to the 1450 zone and see whether this overall trend channel just stays and that will give us a further buying opportunity on platinum so we've got some nice correlation there between gold silver platinum and palladium all, all having a strong week and strong month uh, if we take a look at the copper market copper did pull back yesterday but we are managing to find uh, strong support here we've got Again, a consolidation zone around the 3.2326 level. We can see that we uh, we bottomed out in mid-March. We had a nice pivot low at 3.00 psychological support level. We've got a further breakout at 3.1991. Uh, copper at the moment, if we do see further breakouts on the other precious metals, I'd be looking to, I want us to take out uh, the weekly highs here. So 3.2933, you can see previously this did present a resistance level going back to February. If we can get a nice breakout above that zone, we could be in for a, ju uh, a, a juicy breakout here of in the region of about 100 points up to 3.39 level. So I'll be looking out for that on copper as we go into next week. Again, you can see previous resistance uh, seems to be becoming support now. And again, we've got a consolidation zone between 3.23 up to 3.2933. So uh, the precious metals really in play at the moment. These are definitely ones to watch as we head into next week. Uh, we've had some nice pullbacks this week on the energies. If we take a look at natural gas, we discussed this last week. Natural gas did break through major support of 4.327. You can see we've broken through. We've come and found support 4.14. But again, here we've broken that swing low going back to 21st of January. And there's not really much to support natural gas here until we get down to 3.951 level. 
Uh, we did have a, a double top here as well. Nice V-shaped reversal for the double top. Uh, well, you can see that quite clearly on the chart. And we broke through that key level support, 4.327. A lot of confidence. We have got a number of uh, indicators we use at the Golden Silver Club, which will confirm the sell earlier on this week. And, of course, that is one of our top trades. We move in the region of about 200 points to the downside. We're still staying short natural gas at the moment. We've had some decent sell shorts as well on the energies this week. We take a look at Brent crude oil. We broke support at 109.37. We've come back down to the next major support here at 107.77. Uh, as we go into next week, I want to see if that key level of support, whether it holds or whether we do break. We have found uh, a spike low there at 177, which was actually the support going back to earlier on in June as well. So a break of 107.77, we should get a decent uh, move lower here for Brent crude oil. We could really be in for quite a, a move to the downside. We broke through the upper trending channel as well. If we also take a look at light sweet crude oil, we had this uh, trend channel. Uh, you may remember a couple of weeks ago, we discussed when the price was at the upper end of the trend channel, we were looking for a possible rotation to the downside. So this is what we could potentially see with palladium. Look at palladium chart. It's forming quite a lot of resistance around the upper end of the trend channel. We'll see whether we get a similar move or whether we can get a break out of that. But this is what it will look like on Palladium. If you can't break that resistance channel, it will just continue to consolidate. And then the longer it consolidates, the moving averages will start to turn lower and there'll be some uh, sell opportunities on a break of support. We could rotate down to the lower end of the trend channel. We have uh, found support just about at the, uh, you can see the nice key trend line, support 101.58 here. We could be to a breakout to the upside above 103. As we go into next week, I'll be looking for potential buy opportunities around that level. We can see got some nice risk to rewards there to take WTI crude oil back to the upper end of the trend channel. Okay, right. So what we'll do now, we're just going to move over. We'll also take a look at the softs as well. So on the softs, we'll take a look. First of all, we'll take a look at corn. So we can see here with uh, corn actually did break major support this week as well we came down and we broke through the 406 43 level it was a major uh, support zone we've come down we've broken through 400 as well if you are in a position on corn at the moment what you want to do is just draw on this uh, there's a trend channel which you can draw on i'll just zoom it out a little bit further here as well you can see there is a trend channel on corn where the price is starting uh, to test that level so we may find a little bit of support if you're in a short position on corn, it's a natural take profit area around this key support zone. However, once we take out the lows here of this uh, trend channel, which will take us below 3.80, we can really be due some further downside here on corn. You can see the next key levels here, 3.24 coming down to 300 level. Wheat, very similar situation. Wheat has broken major support, actually. Wheat, we do like this for a sell short. Broke through the 550 level, the key technical level here of support, big shape reverse pattern on the daily here as well I'll just zoom out and you can see how significant this key level of support is if we break through uh 1550 which we're just about doing at the moment 548 here we could really be due a, a decent move lower here in the region let's have a look taking it down to 500 in the region of about a 350 point move you can see there's no real strong support here at all uh until we get about another 350 points lower so we'll uh we'll definitely be watching this very closely for a additional sell opportunities here. So wheat and corn definitely in play uh, to the downside and the precious metals in play for uh, to the upside at the moment for buy opportunities. Also, we did see uh, coffee finally break down. We've been looking for this uh, setup for a while now. We've been stuck in a consolidation zone between 182 down to 162. The price just, just tended to ricochet between a 200-point consolidation zone. We did finally break the low here actually yesterday. Uh, we can see coffee is just broken through that support zone. It's a support level which found one oh found support at the 160.86 level going back to the 20th of February. We've broken and closed below that on the daily at the moment. We are maintaining the downward trend. You know, coffee has struggled to uh, really build any sort of breakout from this downward trending channel. Here you go. So this is the trend channel which is still maintaining on coffee at the moment and now that we've taken this out we could really be do some further downside here i think next key psychological level and key levels of support will be around the 155 level so we could be due on coffee here possibly around a 70 point move lower now as we go into next week so the soft looking week here uh, corn wheat and coffee all looking quite 
uh, week as we go into next week. Oil, we're going to be looking out to see if we're going to find some support around the current levels or whether we'll, we shall break. And uh, the, the metals here looking uh, nice and strong as we go into next week, closing at the weekly highs. And the US dollar index looking to see whether we'll break through the 80 level. If so, we should get further upside on the metals. Right, so what we'll do now, we'll just take a look at the uh, major news announcements as we go into next week. So the key news announcements we need to look out for, first of all, on Tuesday the 15th of July at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. core retail sales. Core retail sales measure the change in the total value of sales at the retail level in the U.S., excluding automobiles. So it's an important indicator of consumer spending. It's also considered as a pace indicator for the U.S. economy. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. Tuesday, the 15th of July at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 Eastern Time, we have the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index. This index rates the relative level of general business, business conditions in the New York State. A level below 0, 0.0 indicates improving conditions, whilst level below indicates worsening conditions. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. The next Wednesday, the 16th of July at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the US PPI. So the producer price index PPI measures the change in the price of goods sold by manufacturers. It's a leading indicator of consumer price inflation, which accounts for the majority of overall inflation. Again, a higher than expected reading should be taken as bullish for the US dollar and a lower than expected reading should be taken as bearish. And then next Thursday, the 17th of July at 1.30 p.m. BST, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. initial jobless claims. That data measures the number of individuals who filed for unemployment insurance for the first time during the past week. This earliest uh, U.S. economic data and week-to-week -week numbers can be volatile. A higher-than-expected reading should be taken as bullish for the U.S. dollar, while a lower-than-expected reading should be taken as bearish. And next Wednesday, the 17th of July at 3.30 p.m. BST, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we have the U.S. crude oil inventory. That data reports the number of barrels crude oil commercial firms have in their inventory. Commercial firms report those inventory levels to the Energy Information Administration on a weekly basis. A higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for crude oil, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. And next Thursday, the 18th of July, we have U.S. natural gas storage. So the Energy Information Administration, the EIA, natural gas storage report, it measures the change in the number of cubic feet of natural gas held in underground storage during the past week. So a higher than expected reading should be taken as bearish for natural gas, while a lower than expected reading should be taken as bullish. We certainly saw further downside after yesterday's uh, storage report. So it's a great announcement if you do trade the energies. That's at Thursday at 3.30 p.m. BST, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And of course, for those of you who would like to take your trading to the next level, you can find out more about the Gold and Silver Club live trading room to request information uh, on the Gold and Silver Club live trading room and daily trade calls. You can very simply go to www.jointhegoldandsilverclub.com. You can contact us at one of our international offices, depending on which one is nearest to you, London, New York, Johannesburg, or Hong Kong, or the Budapest office. Uh, I will leave the numbers on the screen very shortly. And of course, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. You'll receive free weekly reports on the precious metals, the energies, agriculture, live market analysis, and prices. So do make sure you take advantage of that as well. Okay, fantastic. So with that, I shall leave you uh, with these contact details. Good luck for today's trading, guys. And uh, we shall see you back here same time next week. And I look forward to hear from you. Okay, cheers, everybody. Have a great one. Bye-bye.